We are Sorted, a group of mates who have your back when it comes to all things food. From cooking battles, to gadget reviews, it's not worth it. and cookbook challenges, to a midweek meal packs app. Crack your eggs, bake. We uncover the tools that'll help us all cook and eat smarter. Join our community where everything we do starts with you. Hello everyone, I'm Mike, this is Jamie, welcome to Fridge Camp. Now some people like to follow a recipe for a reason, and others, well, others like to make it up as they go along. In this video, Jay and Baz do not have a choice as they go recipe-less trying to create a British classic, a beef wellington. <sighs> and that is them finding out for the first time. Just a little favour, could you read us the um, wiki definition of a beef wellington? Nope. <laughs> Are you okay? I made a beef wellington for Christmas last year. No! I'm struggling to even work out what a wellington is. Okay, so you are going to be cooking recipe-less. What we want from you is one traditional beef wellington each. We've given you the same ingredients. You will have a time limit. You will be judged by James, our resident chef, at the end. And we want you to get creative with one vegetable side dish. Your time starts in three, two, two one. one. Welly! <laughs> Welly! Welly. 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 <laughs> the rules of recipe list is just go with confidence. Confidence. Okay? I know all of the different elements that need to go into a beef wellington, I think. What I don't know is which order to do them all in to make the perfect beef wellington. Beef wellington is like the perfect parcel and you've got to get all the elements right. In the centre, beautifully pink, well seasoned and seared beef fillet. Around that, a mushroom duck cell that punches a flavour and herb and garlic. Wrapped around that, some pancakes, but they shouldn't be too thick. They're there to absorb the juice from the beef and the mushroom, make sure they're seasoned. And on the outside, golden, crisp puff pastry all the way around, and the egg wash is gonna give them the shine they want. I'm not expecting you to make your own pastry. Hallelujah. It is ready rolled and it's in the fridge waiting for you. Firstly, I'm going to take my steak and I'm going to marinate it in mustard. I'm just seasoning and oiling uh, my beef. I'm gonna sear it off in a hot, dry pan and just seal it in. Now we've gone out of our way to choose a fillet of beef that's perfect for a two portion size because we don't want to waste food here. I mean, no chance with Jamie around. Jamie is seasoning well, searing off. Good. Barry, he's marinated his steak in mustard. Good flavour. He's not going to get that sear without burning mustard. No, I'm chopping mushrooms because in my head I need to cook off some mushrooms to make my mushroom tapenade. <laughs> or, technically speaking, a duck cell. Isn't, isn't that a battery? It's Duracell. Uh, rabbit. Should have got a bigger pan, never mind. Next up, I'm going to start my pancake batter. What are you thinking? Just thinking whether I want to cook my pancakes dry or whether I want to butter it up. What always happens to the first pancake in the pan? It's terrible every time. It's, it's a throwaway or it's a snacking one. The important thing is the pan is already at an even temperature. When If it's still heating up, that's the problem. So as long as the pan has been preheating for long enough, then it's okay. I've made my batter, just flour, egg and milk. Whisk it up, let that rest. What's that? <laughs> rosemary. A lot of time and some funny looking rosemary. No, are they both the same? <laughs> I don't know anymore. I'm not having a This is what I mean. That's time. That is rosemary. Correct. Oh, no. oh, oh, are you ready? Yeah, yeah I'm ready. So it's not loose, so I don't know what's going to happen. It's an omelette. Snacking pancake. <laughs> hey, mushrooms. Fit in the pan now, don't they, Baz? Yeah, just about. How you doing, Baz? Um, I'm getting by, mate, if I'm honest. Right, let's get some butter in there. <laughs> I've got you covered. Oh. Garlic going in, flavour! Gets, I'm getting some colour on mushrooms now, which might be important. <laughs> and I'm just cooking it out so the mushrooms dry up and they start going a little bit gold on the outside. It's how I like them on toast. Toast could be outside. <laughs> right, I'm going to go for another toss. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See how this goes. Bit of oil. Salt and pepper. So what you want to do is sear it without cooking it through too much. The reason they were both given a fridge cold or almost freezer cold state. This just feels weird. This just feels wrong. Well, it's because you covered it in mustard. Yeah, it might be that. <laughs> <laughs> Taking it off. Just gonna leave it there. Baz. Hello. What's Jay doing to his mushrooms? Taking the skin off. People say they're a little bit leathery, but it doesn't make any difference. It's just a waste of time. Is it? Is it? 
I like to peel my mushroom. In this, by the time you've blended it into a duck cell, probably not gonna notice the difference, but by peeling them, you also get rid of any grit or soil or dirt. So the alternative is presumably Baz brushed or washed his. You can also, it is also known you can, you can known to cook the soil out. Cook the soil. I think is a term. Yeah, look at that colour. It's all the soil. <laughs> For my duxel, I've also then blended it up into a fine paste. Looks more like a tapenade now, doesn't it? It is a tapenade. <laughs> Mushrooms, I'm going to chop them up, but not too precisely because I want to zhuzh them a little bit later. I'm just going to cook them in butter, season heavily with salt and pepper, use some of the mustard and some of the herbs and the garlic. I think the important thing is to get mustard, the flavour of mustard, somewhere within the beef wellington. Now where that goes, who's to say? Flavour's getting there somehow, isn't it? Exactly. So you're putting half in your mushrooms? Half yeah. of my mushrooms and half of my beef. So Baz, you're choosing to lace with the butter. Oh, and he's getting a bit fancy by putting some herbs in his pancake. That is a decent looking omelette, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a coal and they're quite hot, so I put them in the freezer. I think I've got an idea for my side and it's bold. How bold's really bold? Like, might upstage the Wellington. <laughs> <laughs> Doing what I think I'm, you're doing, doing. I'm starting my side. Are you doing what I think you're doing? I'm just going to do it. He's, he's going to do it. You're making cauliflower cheese? But not just normal cauliflower cheese. If he did just stick to making just cauliflower cheese, he'd probably win. But the fact that he's going to do something a little bit barry to it <laughs> could give you a chance. <laughs> my side dish. I saw a massive red cabbage and I thought, do you know what? That looks like it needs braising. That was it. And then I thought it didn't go right the last time that we did it. And if I can get it one step closer to being right, then that's a good thing. What's this gonna add in terms of taste? Some freshness with some kind of like tartness of vinegar to go along with the richness of a buttery, garlicky beef, beef wellington. I think the braised with cabbage is quite a nice touch. I think I'd want that with the beef wellington. Oh, something smells yummy, simply yummy. So I feel like I'm ready to go on my side. My cauliflower's in the oven. But now I feel like it's time to start constructing my beef welly. I have no idea what I'm about to do. First things first, the rest of my mustard on my beef. I think this is a breakdown. <laughs> Are you having oh, a breakdown? This will help. <laughs> Good. Here, here's an Evers. How do you, I don't, I don't know, honestly, I don't know if it goes steak, pancake, tapenade. <laughs> He's <laughs> still sticking with tapenade. I'm just going to go for it, because I think it's going to be delicious no matter what I do. He is having a meltdown. <laughs> Don't you help him, Ebers. Here's my order. In the middle, there is beef. Then there are pancakes around the beef. And then on the outside of the pancakes is mushroom duxelle. And then it's all cooked. And then it's get it's eaten. <laughs> <laughs> that is normally what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, good. It's making, it's making a burrito. It's just made a hot pot. <laughs> it's made a burrito. Oh, this is hell. <laughs> Do I do this? <laughs> <laughs> I went to line of, I know how to make ravioli, so I'm sticking to that. <laughs> it's a giant beef ravioli. Do you think the pan? I was going to say it's brave to have not put it on baking paper, but... <laughs> I can't move it because it's, it's so sticky. I don't know what I've just done. I'm going to check its temperature after half an hour, just to be safe. What are you thinking, Jay? I'm making a J. So I think for me, the easiest way to do it is fridge cold everything, unroll the puff pastry, then lay the pancakes across so they overlap, then the mushroom duck cell, then your beef fillet, and then roll it up like a sausage roll. That is quite extraordinary for us both to have done it different ways and completely wrong. I'm going to make some kale crisps, Michael. Kale crisps to go with your... Braised red cabbage. Oh, mate. You're doing amazingly well. I don't know about that, but we oh. shall see. You're doing a fantastic job. To give my cheese sauce a bit of a twist, I've added some peas and kale. I've just blanched them just so they retain their colour, because I want this to be vibrant green. Use a blender. Baz, well, it just appears that... Don't worry. What is that? Pea and kale cheese sauce. Is that, no, is that a thing? It is now. That's a nice idea, Baz. Thank you. I'm going to plate it 
unconventional. Let's just put it that way. What are you aiming for? 26. Body temperature's 37. I'm going to give you a clue. If you serve it at 26, he's going to send it back to the kitchen. Honestly, mine's puffed up beautifully. It's golden brown all over. He's taking it out. Oh, OK. Yummy. Look at that. Suddenly feeling more confident. Interesting. Oh, it's got away with it. I forgot to take my cow crisps out. <laughs> You're not serving them. Oh, I love cow crisps. We'll have them, we'll have them. Last 10 seconds, get it onto the plate or board. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Step away from the welly. Miss that one. You've got the best job here, James. Oh, am I not supposed say, to do be that? Careful. It's okay. It's, be careful. it's fine. It's fine. I've got faith. We're, we're obviously cutting it into it, expecting great beef at medium rare. You ready? Oh. 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 That looks pretty good. Oh. Pretty even. How oh. do you feel? You must be bloody nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. That's that's good beef, mate. A little bit soggy on the bottom. Sorry. But it's looking pretty good. It tastes good. Yeah? Yeah. It's got mushroom flavour. The beef is very well cooked. Oh, the pancake's got good flavour too. Are you sure you always try that? Because I'm already quite impressed by this. It's very nice. <laughs> the flavours are very good. It's very well seasoned. And I'm even forgiving the slightly soggy bottom because it's very tasty. Could have been cooked for longer. But I get a nice apple-y flavour. Mm -hmm. Oh, you must be so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Round two. The pastry feels better on this one. It's more even, it holds together better. Good start. Overcooked, so overcooked. What are you looking for? In terms of beef? Yeah. That. So just. <laughs> it, it's, it's fillet, so it should be like rare mm -hmm. to medium rare. Mm -hmm. Oh. Not quite holding together as well as Jay's. The duck cell is a little bit more uneven, mm -hmm. and I think it's slightly wetter, so you've actually achieved the same result. It's still good. Oh, good. It's lacking that punch of flavor. I think maybe some things are seasoned more than others. Mm -hmm. The pastry is crisp, but you've got a more even color on top, but the pancakes are slightly thicker, and the duck cell and the beef, which are obviously the main, kind of the main events, don't have quite the same flavor. Your side dish looks extremely interesting, though. What do you mean interesting? I would love to try it. Please, dive in. It's a cauliflower cheese with okay. pea and kale. Mm. Oh, it's mm. very sweet. Mm. Mm. I like it. That's delicious. Cool. You should have served that. <laughs> I think we all know that I'm going to pick Jamie's. Because although there were good things about both, it's the beef and the mushroom that did it for me. And it tasted really good, even though it didn't look as good as yours. Nice I'm so fair, sorry. Fair. Well done, mate. We, we got there. We made just, two Wellingtons. Just, well that's done. a tough one. I'm gonna say it. Feel like we need to up the ante with these recipe-less challenges now. Comment down below, let us know what recipes we should be trying to make recipe-less. The harder, the better. As always, thank you so much for watching. We will see you every Wednesday and every Sunday at 4 p.m. UK time. More fun. More fun. We've also built the Sorted Club, where you can get tons of foodie inspo using the PAX Midweek Meal app, discover and share restaurant recommendations using the Eat app, listen and contribute to our Feast Your Ears podcast, and send us ideas for new cookbooks you'll receive throughout the year. Check it all out by heading to sorted.club. And now a blooper. I know that Beef Wellington is a hunk of meat cooked in some pastry with some lovely flavours. <laughs> You've just described a pie.